Hello and welcome to this episode of God Day, which I have entitled Self Accept and Reflect God's Image. Now today I want to talk about self acceptance and self love. And I want to encourage you to be able to look at yourself through God's eyes. I'll be talking about how we can get our worth and value from him. And how can we learn to love and accept ourselves for who God says we are, not for who everyone else around us says we are. Now, as I speak this message to you, I'm also speaking it to myself. Why? Well, this year I really had a realization of the fact that I really do rely heavily on other people for satisfaction and for fulfillment. I like attention and I like to be liked. I mean, who doesn't? But it's not healthy when that's what you rely on. Because the danger is when that acceptance and that like and that attention is taken away from you, it can make you feel really down and it can make you feel depressed and that there's something wrong with you. So I've decided that this year I'm going to focus more on what God says about me because his words are unchanging. And you know what? The Bible says so much good things about you. And today I'm going to be looking at some Bible verses which will really uplift and encourage you and tell you what God thinks of you. Because the world we are living in at the moment, we are so consumed by the online world. Social media has literally taken over our reality. Think about it. How much time do you spend scrolling on Instagram, scrolling on Facebook and uploading photos that you spend hours editing and putting filters on? Popularity and value now come from how many followers we have. Beauty seems to come from how many likes our filtered photos have. And our confidence comes from the nice comments we get. And if we don't get all of these things, it can lead to things I mentioned a minute ago, to depression, low self-esteem, anxiety, and to even suicide. But in this message, I'm going to uplift and encourage us that no matter what the world says about us, what God says about us is the truth. And as I said, he's got so much good things to say about you. And I really want to digest everything that I'm saying today. And I'm really going to take in and get our worth and value from God. Like I mentioned, I rely heavily on other people's attention. And I feel like I have a hole inside that I feel with that attention. And the moment that attention is gone, the moment I feel I'm not accepted in a group or not liked by someone, I start to really feel down. And you know what I realized? I shouldn't be relying on other people because they are humans. I should be relying on my heavenly father who's looking out for me, who's guiding me, who made me exactly how I am, who has a plan and a purpose for my life. And once I've accepted who I am in Christ and accepted all these positive things that I'm going to be telling you, then I don't need to rely on other people. I can literally focus my life on where I need to be heading and love myself. Because if you think about it, if you can't love yourself, how can you love others? Now, we often take on what other people say about us and we believe their words and think it's fact. So if we can believe what people say about us, then why do we struggle so much to believe the word God says about us in the Bible? God knows everything about you. He is your creator and he is my creator and he knows everything about me. And in fact, we are made in his image. Genesis 1, 26 to 27 says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. You see that? That's repeated a few times there. He created them to emphasize and to bring home that we have been created. We were thought about and we were put together and we have a plan and purpose for our life. But being made in God's image does not necessarily mean just the outward appearance, but our inner being as well. To be created in the likeness of God means to be a representation and a reflection of God. And the only human being 
who managed to walk this earth and show us a perfect example of how to do this is Jesus himself. So we need to fix our eyes on Jesus and take a look at some of his attributions and we will see in what image we have been created and who as humans and individuals we are meant to be. So what are some of Jesus' attributions? He is faithful, loving, patient, holy, humble, forgiving, generous, wise, virtuous, selfless, and many, many more things that the Bible says. And if we had all these things in our life, if we truly believed that we were capable of infusing all of these qualities in ourselves and to reach out to other people, then other people actually be attracted to us. We wouldn't feel like we have to act or react in a certain way to fit in with a certain group because we will be living the way God has planned us to live and we will be infused by the Holy Spirit and we will be giving out the Holy Spirit and people will see that in us and think, there's something different about that person. There's something different about you. I want to know what it is. And then that is a perfect opportunity for us to tell them what it is. We have Jesus in our life and we are following his footsteps and then we can lead them to Christ too. You know, the second point I want to make is the fact that God loves you unconditionally. In Isaiah 43, God is talking to the people of Israel and in verse four, he says, since you were precious in my sight, you have been honored and I have loved you. Now, as followers of Jesus, we have also been grafted in to the family of God's chosen people, which were the Israelites. And therefore we can claim these words for ourselves. It says, we are precious in God's sight, precious. Now, what does it mean when something is precious? It means it's of great value or of high price and it is highly cherished. And that is what God says about you. Now, the verse goes on to say that God loves you and God's love for you is unconditional. So let's take a look at what unconditional means. It means there's no terms, no conditions that you need to meet before God will love you. God loves you right here, right now, exactly how you are. You can't do anything more for God to love you more than he already does. And nothing you do or have done will make him love you any less. I'm just gonna say that again so we can really get this clear. You can't do anything for God to love you any more than he already does. And nothing you do or have done will make you love him, make him love you any less. God doesn't base his love on you from your past or your actions, and no amount of good works you do makes God love you any higher. He is pleased, of course, when we do good works for his kingdom, but that comes after we've accepted Jesus into our lives and we start building a relationship with him. As then we get to a point where we will want to live the way Jesus did and do things for the glory of God. Now, Jeremiah 31 says, God loves us with an everlasting love. So not only is God's love unconditional, but it is also eternal. How incredible is that? It doesn't have a time limit, an expiry date, or a time span of when it's going to run out. It is everlasting. So we can be confident and we can know that we are always loved, even if you don't feel like it, even if you feel lonely, if you don't have many friends, if you have a bad family situation and you've never felt human love, just know your heavenly father loves you. He sees you and he knows where you are and he loves you with an everlasting, unconditional, eternal love. And how do we know that we are loved? Well, in 1 John 4, verse 9 to 10, it says, This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. 
Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. So Jesus sacrificing himself on that cross was an action of love. And God gave and sacrificed his one and only son. It heavily shows how much he loves us and values us and we are so much worth that he wanted to continue a relationship with us. And Jesus dying on the cross made us reconcile that relationship with him. The well-known scripture that you've probably heard a lot is John 3.16, but it's still such an important and powerful scripture. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And even Jesus himself willingly gave up his life for you. He was obedient to his Father's will and the plan for salvation. And the fact that he even sweat blood in the Garden of Gethsemane just before he was arrested and started his journey to the cross. That shows just how much anguish and pain he was in because he knew what was about to happen. Yet he still said to God, your will be done. In that moment of pain and suffering, he was still thinking about you. He was still thinking about how much he loves you and wanted you to be reconciled with God. If you ask Jesus, how much do you love me? He will open his arms up and say this much and he died on the cross. I just want that to sink in for a moment. Now Romans 5a also says something pretty profound. God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. While we were still sinners. Nobody is perfect. As I mentioned at the beginning, Jesus is the only human being who walked this earth and lived life perfectly how God intended. We are all sinners, we all do things wrong. But while we are still sinners, Jesus Christ died for us. Now this emphasised the point I made earlier, that it's not about what we do or don't do, it's about God's love for us and the mercy and grace that Jesus pours out on us. And as I mentioned earlier, we are so consumed in a selfie culture world. At the moment, we're looking at ourselves. It's quite a selfish culture as well because we are looking at how we want to be perceived, what are people saying about me, what am I portraying on social media, how do I want to be portrayed, and what can I use to be portrayed in that light. There is so much we can do to a picture now to make it look perfect. But the truth is, that is not reality. When we're scrolling on Instagram and we see all these celebrities looking perfect, looking happy, like they've got it all together, just remember that is one snapshot of their day. And the majority of the time, most people don't post what they're truly feeling. They don't post when they're feeling sad or when they're feeling lonely. They want everyone to think they're having a great time and loving life because they feel like that's what people want to see. And to be accepted, we just post things that we think people want to see. And we post nice pictures of ourselves so that people comment nice things on us because that's what we rely on. That's what gives us confidence. And what we think is what the world is and what reality is. But what God says in reality is the truth. So now I just want to spend some time looking at some practical things we can think about to know that we can get our worth and value from God and not from social media. So of course on Instagram and Snapchat and them sort of social medias, you can choose so many different filters to make you look so many different ways. But what does a filter do? Well, it covers our flaws. It can give us smooth skin. It covers our spots, any scars, or wrinkles. But you know what? Them scars and them wrinkles make us who we are. Them scars and them wrinkles have a story behind them and they make you who you are. So don't change, don't cover yourself because you can expand on those and, and talk to people about your experiences. But if we look at what our flaws are in a spiritual sense, these could be seen as our sins. But our sins are covered by Jesus' blood. Now, what does that mean? 
sounds a bit abstract, doesn't it? But this means that when God now looks at us, he sees us as pure. He sees us through Jesus Christ, who was pure and blameless and sinless walking on this earth. So now that we are covered in his righteousness, covered in his pureness, covered in his blameless, God sees us as pure. We are sinners and we do do things wrong, but Jesus took up all our sins, all our imperfections and all our flaws on the cross. So this means if we have true repentance, if we come to God and admit we have done wrong, we can be forgiven and we can have a relationship with God and he can show us the path he has for us and who we are meant to be, who he created us to be. Titus 3 verse 5 says, But when the kindness and the love of our God, our Saviour toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. He saved us through the washing, the regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit. So just like a filter that we put on on social media, it regenerates our skin, it makes us look flawless, it makes us look perfect. But when we accept what Jesus has done for us, the Holy Spirit then comes upon us and he renews us and brings life to God's words. We can open the Bible and we can clearly read all the things that God says about us, that we are precious, that we are valued and that we are loved but sometimes they can feel like just words on a page, especially if our feelings and our emotions are telling us that we're not good enough. But when we accept Jesus, when we have a relationship with him, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells within us. The Bible says we are a temple of the Holy Spirit. He lives in us now. So what we read, then words on a page become life and they can become believable and we can digest and ingest them and then spread them to others. And sometimes we need reminding of this. We need reminding and refreshing of his words. Just because you've read it once or you heard it once doesn't mean that you're going to hold on to it forever. And that is absolutely fine. God encourages us to daily pick up his word and meditate and focus on him and what he says about us. And if it's past actions that we are struggling with, which is blocking ourselves from being able to accept ourselves, then I want to encourage you with 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So when you accept Jesus into your life, you become a new creation. Old things are in the past. You have become new. The Bible also says we need a renewing of the mind, the way that we think. If we're thinking our, in our past selves, in the sin, sinful lifestyle that we used to have, we need prayer to renew our minds, to think the way God thinks and continue with the journey that he has set out for us. Another thing you can do on photos to make them look better is change the brightness. Now this changes the lighting and it gets rid of shadows. Well, something that gets rid of shadows in our life is God's glory. And we are a reflection of him and we are called to be a light in the darkness. The world we are living in right now is full of darkness. And we are called as Christians to be the light, to bring hope to people, to bring love to people, to bring them to their faith, to bring them to God and show them there is a better way and to show them that at the end of the day, God has the victory. The world we are living in now is not the end. There's an eternal heaven that we are going to be glorified in and it's our duty while we are on earth to spread that to others. Now Matthew records Jesus talking about believers being a light of the world. Matthew 5, 14 to 16 says, You are the light of the world. A city that is on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all those who are in the house. So let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So when we have the anointing of the Holy Spirit, and we truly accept and believe what God says about us, we will have the confidence to walk out what God says, 
and to be bold with the way we are living. And when we do that, others will see the light that we are shining out and that we are glorifying and they will be attracted to us. They'll be giving us the attention. We won't be chasing them for it. We will be so focused in our way and the good and the confidence that we are doing for God's kingdom to glorify him and to build his kingdom that others will come to us. Isn't that incredible? And when we are light on a stand that everyone can see, we will be so busy with focusing on what we can do for God that we won't be concerned about wanting to be seen by others, but they'll see us and come to us anyway. And that will be the opportunity that we can reach out, help them and point them to Christ. Looking at other attributes that we can do to a photo to enhance it, we can change the contrast. Now in photography, the contrast changes the colouring. It's the difference between the light and the dark in an image. The contrast has bold colours and shows texture in the subject. And low contrast images will have a narrow range of tones that might feel flat or dull. And if we take that spiritually, feeling flat or dull could equate to a negative mindset. The human brain is very powerful and feelings and emotions can sometimes control us. And we can tell ourselves things that put us down, that there's something wrong with us, we're not loved, we're not worthy enough, no one likes me. But the things that you tell yourself aren't necessarily true. Or a lot of the time they're not true, especially if you're thinking negative. So we need to have a more positive mindset. We need to see ourselves the way God sees us and all the positive things about us, not the negative. And hopefully you'll be able to reflect on some of the good things that I've said in this message that God thinks about you. And the more we think about what the world says about you, the more we will believe that about ourselves. But if we focus on what God thinks about us, we will start to believe who we really are. Philippians 4, 8 to 9 says, Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are a good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. We need to pray, as I mentioned, for the renewing of our mind. And this is a daily thing, to consciously think on good things and think good things about ourselves. Our feelings and emotions, especially when we're hurt or down, can make us doubt how God feels about us or the way he sees us. But we need to remember his word is never changing. And his word in Psalm 139 verse 14 says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Now the last kind of filter I'm gonna talk about in today's message is a bit of a fun one. And it is one that I've had some fun with my friends with. And this is where you can make yourself look older or younger. You can make yourself go as far as looking like a baby or looking like a grandma or a granddad. But in a spiritual sense, this is a message to tell us that God meets us where we are. Life is a journey and we shouldn't rush it or compare ourselves to others. We are all at different stages of our walk with Jesus and we shouldn't look at other people and think, oh, they're further on than me or, oh, that's where I should be because God, God has a plan and a purpose each individually for us and he sees where you are and he's there holding your hand, guiding you to which way to go. There's a couple of verses in Luke that talks about the fact that the Son of Man came to seek and save which was those who were lost. And it also goes on to say, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. So God's not expecting you to be the most perfect person. He knows that you're a sinner, but he loves you anyway. He sent his one and only son to die for you anyway, so that he can be reconciled with you and meet you where you are. Time and the different experiences we go through change the way we think about ourselves. We go through different things in life and we are at different places. And sometimes when we go through these different places, we need reassurance and that's fine. So as we come towards the end of the message today, I just want to remind you of the things we have talked about. I want to remind you, you have worth and value in God. The Bible says that God thinks these things about you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. 
You are made in the image of God. You have a purpose. You are intentionally unique. You were made to be exactly who you are. God didn't make you to be like anybody else. He needs you to be you and to love yourself and accept yourself the way that he does so that he can guide you and guide you into your journey and into your purpose to build his kingdom. You are loved, you are valued, you are worthy, you are precious, you are pure, you are holy, and you are a new creation, even if you don't feel like it. Just remember, feelings and emotions aren't fact, but the word of God is. So I just wanna leave you on this encouraging scripture from 1 Samuel 16 to seven. It says, but the Lord said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees, for man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. God doesn't look at what you look like physically, like the world does. He's not concerned about you looking perfect like Instagram is. He is looking at your heart and he sees you exactly where you are and he wants to come and meet you there. Thank you very much for listening to my message today and I hope you have a blessed day.